Thank you so much for coming along to the ITV Digital Meet the Controller session. Uh, we will be talking to Paul Mortimer today and I'll be interviewing him a little bit later on. So please do, if you have any questions, get onto the Edinburgh TV Festival app and submit them and we'll try and get through as many as possible at the end of the session. Um, a little bit about Paul. He had been ITV's controller of digital channels for four years before he was promoted to head of digital channels and acquisitions in 2016 and he's now in charge of a lot of things, a lot of things on his plate. He looks after ITV2, 3, 4, ITVB and CITV, ITV Encore as well and he launched ITVB back in 2014, the newest ITV digital channel. Um, before joining ITV in 2012, he also spent five years at Channel 4 and was also worked at Discovery Channel and Channel 5. So he's been around. Um, we will, we will, <laughs> we will chat to him at the end of the um, session. And so, yeah, like I said, do get your questions in. But in the meantime, I'm going to invite him to the stage. Paul. Cool. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for coming, everybody. Um, we're doing it slightly differently this year. Uh, the first half um, is going to be me and a few uh, colleagues, people that make a contribution to uh, ITV and the digital channels. Uh, and then, as Sam said, I'll, I'll sit down and uh, do uh, an interview in the second part. Um, so I want to give you an overview of uh, the ITV channels, the impact that they're having, and a bit of top-line information that might be useful to you with regards to spend and um, audience delivery. Um, as we go through this little mini presentation at the top, the focus will become about ITV2 and Will's presentation. Will from Marketing is going to um, talk about ITV2 as a channel brand in a second. That will be focused um, especially on ITV2 since that's the um, channel with probably more opportunities for you guys as suppliers and certainly for us in terms of ambition and, and resource that we put behind it. After Will, we've got... Um, uh, uh, Richard Cowles, who, uh, as most of you might will know, is the executive producer of um, our big hit, Love Island, uh, along with many other uh, things that he produces out of ITV Studios. He's going to talk about Love Island, but also about a new project that we've got um, from him and his team, which will launch in winter 2018. And then finally, another producer friend, uh, Carl Warner from Electric Ray, who um, hopefully is going to get us all excited about a new show that we've got this autumn called Bromans, and I believe he's got some... Uh, material to share with you. Uh, first of all, um, let me just remind you of the portfolio. Um, this is the family of channels. There are seven channels, six digital channels, which uh, me and my team look after. And there's the Mothership ITV in the middle there, um, attracting volume audiences, um, entertainment for everyone um, at the heart of it. Uh, the digital channels complement ITV, and we, we're, very, um, we're, we're very clear about um, targeting certain audiences. So, for example, ITV2 is targeted uh, at 20-somethings with um, a largely entertainment offer, and we sell 16 to 34 audiences to advertisers. So if you're over 34, we're really not interested. Uh, there's somewhere else for you in the portfolio. That might be ITVB, where we attract um, young women and housewives with children. And that's become a bit of a reality channel. Uh, ITV3 is where older audiences come for a bit of nostalgia and uh, to uh, re-engage with the drama library from ITV, by and large. Um, and uh, ABC One Adults would be the target for that. ITV4, we target men with a sports and entertainment offer and so on and so on. Um, there's a clip now which I believe is queued, uh, which will just show you uh, the breadth of uh, material that we produce across our six channels. So that was some of the content. I just want to um, briefly talk a little bit about the impact and performance of uh, the six digis. Um, they're pretty well resourced, and um, I've been allowed to, to uh, share some financial information with you. Um, I, but I think, it's, I think it's in the public domain. ITV spends just over a billion pounds on content across all of um, our channels. Um, the share that we are allocated is um, a little under 200 million pounds every year, which is 17% of the total budget. Now, a lot of that money goes towards things like sports rights, or so US acquisitions, movie deals, and all the rest of it. But for um, hungrier producers in the room, um, you should know that we still spend well over £100 million with UK producers on UK-originated content across these six channels. Um, so I did want to uh, land that message in case you thought you might be barking up the wrong tree by sending me all your best treatments. Um, in terms of ratings distribution, uh, I think we're punching uh, above our weight. 17% of the money 
delivers 28% of ITV's um, family ratings. Uh, the six channels you'll see on the right-hand side there um, stacked up. It's driven, the ratings for individuals is um, driven by ITV2 and ITV3. Uh, and we have returned uh, thus far this year a 6.3% uh, percent share of total viewing. And just to contextualise that for you, I'm sure most of you will be familiar with, with channel ratings generally, but 6.3 is bigger than either BBC Two or Channel Five or even um, Channel Four. So um, we've got a little bit of um, impact uh, in the marketplace, I would argue. But we are not about, as I said at the top, we're not really about volume. Uh, we like volume, but we're really about the purity of the audience and we're all about demographics. Um, this is the performance of my channels for the year to date. Uh, not too bad. Um, uh, we're not down across any of the um, uh, channels. Uh, three of them are about flat year on year for various reasons. Uh, but we've seen some growth across uh, CITV, which is up 15% this year. Um, ITV4 is up 13%. And ITV2 has had a really, really great year. And there'll be a bit more about that and our success there. Um, uh, uh, delivered largely by two or three um, big important pieces uh, for us. We've had a 23% uplift. Uh, in 1634 viewing, and that's a 5.7% share of that audience. And I'm pleased to say, not least because I used to work as head of E4, uh, that we've overtaken E4 in the demographic for the first time ever. So that's uh, a bit of an achievement. It's been five years I've been waiting to say that, so I'm very pleased to be able to say it to you now. Um, thank you. <laughs> Um, and that makes ITV2 number one on uh, many measures. Uh, we've long been the most watched digital channel, but our profile now, it's all about profile. I can't, I can't kind of reinforce that enough. It's about young people. It's about 20-somethings when it comes to ITV2. And we now are number one in the demo, as I said. That's because we are the fastest growing uh, channel for 16 to 34s. That would be the 23% number that you saw earlier. We've also done in terms of um, reorganizing ITV2, uh, not least as we expanded our portfolio about three <coughs> years ago. We've got a broader offer now. We didn't used to get too many young men coming into the channel. We get significantly more men now, and that's improved our reach. So uh, more than 17 million people every week now come in to watch ITV2, which is amazing. Uh, and then in terms of programming, Love Island has had a lot of mentions already this week, and I dare say we'll mention it a few times uh, in this uh, session. Um, it, it's by far and away now the biggest show on digital digital television. But Celebrity Juice, which is a very long established and a uh, piece of um, comedy that we love, is also still, after nine years, the number one comedy entertainment series in digital. And Celebability is um, a new show that we launched this year and uh, has so far been the best rated new series of the year of 16 to 34s. Um, so I feel we're on a bit of a roll. So. Um, Doing this session this year in this climate uh, couldn't be any better for me. All I need now is for Sam to be kinder to me when we get to the uh, interview, and I'll be well happy. But I'm going to introduce you now to Will Wordsall, who's going to talk about the marketing of ITV2. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you very briefly about the journey we've been on uh, with ICV2 uh, over the last couple of years, really, since uh, refreshing the brand, focusing completely on young audiences to now, as Paul says, being the biggest uh, youth digital channel. So when we um, did this, as well as refreshing the brand, we decided that from an editorial and brand point of view, we're going to focus squarely on the idea of outrageously entertaining. So everything we do is about being outrageously entertaining. Um, when, as you'd imagine, when we decided to do this and with 1634s being absolutely everything to us, we went out to speak to these people um, and what we found was very clear is that they don't really see devices, they just see stuff to watch. And so for us to be relevant to them, we've got to be active and seamless across all of those environments. So that obviously means things like investing in the hub and making sure our programmes are available in the ways that they want to watch. But also in terms of our marketing, just the way we distribute stuff, there was a lot we could learn from the way they consume digital content. So I just want to talk to you just very briefly about three of the, th the main things we've learned from that and what we've done differently uh, as a result. So the first um, is the idea of um, short, sharp content. So, so much that is consumed through social media um, is very short, it's very disposable, there's GIFs, there's memes, um, yet TV marketing has stayed pretty much the same for about 50 years. 20 second, 30 second, 60 second promos. We've done very little to learn from the language and techniques and rhythms of what young people are watching. So we did something really simple. Uh, we created very short promos called OMOs, see what we did there, uh, that are dotted across the channel and they're very 
reactive, they react to popular culture, uh, and they're very, very short, um, reacting to either popular culture or to our shows, and they're across the channel, making it feel very fresh, and very similar to a news feed. And I've just got a few examples of those to play. Who is your girl's celebrity crush? I'd ask us by his name, Jason Staple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked that everyone's not looking for someone like you, do you know what I mean? I'm just saying how it is, do you know what I mean? But do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Um, and just in the space of a few seconds, it really livens up the channel. And it also extends our reach greatly because for a 20 second primo, you can get six, seven or eight of those away. Um, the other thing that's really key uh, when talking to young audiences is randomness. And that's randomness both in the sort of traditional mathematic sense of the word of never seeing the same, same thing twice, but also in the sort of modern colloquial sense of the word of just random things. There's a few ways that we do that with our brand, but one of the, probably the, the simplest um, ways of bringing that to life is through our idents. In the traditional sense of the word, uh, they, you'll never ever see the same ident twice. So the combinations and the time lengths of our idents are decided at the point of transmission by an algorithm, meaning you'll never see the same thing twice. There's about 200,000 different um, potential combinations. But just in the modern sense of the word, they just feature really random scenarios. Just again, helping to make the channel feel like a place for young people. And the third and probably the most important thing that we, that we really focus on uh, with young audiences is the importance of being in their world. Um, it's very hard to get people's attention full stop. It's really hard to get young people's attention. So my job is all about getting those people to the channel. So there's a couple of things we do uh, to do that. The first um, is stunts. So big experiential pieces to grab attention. So it's very hard to get their attention. So we always talk about the idea of hiding behind a hedge and jumping out when you least expect it. We want to surprise young people. We want to take outrageously entertaining out into the real world. So whether that's hunks in trunks, giving out budgie smugglers and ice creams and beach balls on launch day for Love Island, or putting Peter Griffin onto page three of The Sun, uh, dead chickens at stations across the country, or a flash mob in Manchester to announce that Family Guy was now at ITV2. All just hoping to try and cut through and get young people to our channel. It won't surprise you to know that social media is quite important as well. Uh, but it's not just a case of going onto social. Outrageously entertaining is the filter through which we see everything we do in social. The platforms we go onto, the content we create, the influences and talent that we use. And social has become so important for us. You'll have seen with Love Island through the summer just the quantity and quality of content, just keeping people engaged throughout the 23 hours that they had to wait until the next TX. Um, which is probably the the, the neat and natural segue. What we've tried to do with ITV2 as a brand is basically create the perfect environment for the biggest youth programming around. Uh, and there's no bigger youth programming than Love Island. You might have heard about it a couple of times over the last day or two. Um, so this is the natural segue, as if we've planned it, to hand over uh, to Richard Cowles, the man behind it. Uh, thank you very much. Lovely year to be in Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I'm here to talk to you about a brand new stripped uh, series that we're making for ITV2 uh, next year called Survival of the Fittest. Um, but first, uh, I've been asked to give you a little bit of an insight into this year's Love Island, uh, which I'm very happy to do. Um, so over the summer, 350 crew spent seven weeks filming 32 Love Islanders who went through the villa. Ultimately, Amber and Kem were chosen as winners and shared a £50,000 prize and a future of fame, fortune, and hopefully eternal love. Um, we also educated the nation as to what it means to be muggy, snaky, a little bit leave it. Uh, and if you don't know what I mean, don't cry about it, you melt. Um, so ITV2 has really backed Love Island over the last three years. And I think that's been so important because the show has needed to build. Um, you know, it could have not got past the first series if you go on return on investment and all of that, but actually I think that commitment to the show has really paid off now. Um, this year's final achieved 3.1 million viewers uh, and the series average for the all important 16 to 34s was 1.4 million, up 33.5% on the previous series. Uh, so basically 65% of Love Island's audience were under 35. Um, so Love Island has helped ITV2 become the biggest channel on, um, for 16 to 24s and has proven that young people will watch linear TV. How does it do that? Well, it's authentic. 
Um, it's funny, it's relatable for the audience, uh, it's dramatic, and keenly, it's um, totally unpredictable and uh, has taken over social media. Um, for 16 to 34s especially, if you weren't watching the show, you weren't part of the conversation. Um, Love Island is the most reactive format I've ever been involved in, and the production embraces the so social conversation that's happening. Um, the producers on the ground, who are amazing, um, were creating the show, working really closely together with the online team uh, to make sure that those two worlds uh, feed into each other. Um, the lunchtime preview clips that we've released on the app and social each day were watched an average of 1.6 million times. And when we did the, me, uh, the tease for the Midway Twist, uh, Casa Amor, that was watched 3 million times. Um, so the show is uh, pretty much the most tweeted about show every night that it was on. Um, and the Instagram account, which, account, which was among um, the things... It w so the Instagram account, which featured photos that came directly from the islanders that they were taking in the villa, um, overtook X Factor and is now ITV's most followed account. So we're really engaging with that audience. But that conversation on the, over social um, and via our polls on the app has been massively important to the success of the show because everything that's happening and that conversation is being listened to by the producers and then is directly impacting on what we do uh, within the show. Um, so we'd implement challenges. You may have seen the Stormzy one uh, where he uh, tweeted that Olivia, uh, well, that, that Chris shouldn't be with Olivia. Well, that went straight into a game and uh, chaos ensued. So we can kind of really react to what's happening and listen to the audience and then make the show uh, better. But the, the, the sort of the show lives beyond the seven weeks of TX. We turn people into celebrities. Um, we've got a spin-off show in production with Chris and Kem, uh, who you may know had a bromance and uh, they, they sort of got together over a, a common theme and a love of rap. Uh, so we're now doing uh, Chris and Kem straight out of Love Island. Uh, where we're going to follow them on a voyage of discovery into rap, grime and hip-hop over two uh, one-hour specials. Uh, and I'm very excited to say that we have a brand new uh, format launching on ITV2 next year, Survival of the Fittest. Uh, the series will be stripped every night of the week and was developed as a companion piece to Love Island. Um, it will see a group of hot singles, because they're very popular, uh, living together under the searing African sun where they'll flirt, have fun, enjoy everything that South Africa has to offer, but they're also in a battle of the sexes to win a cash prize. Uh, they'll take part in physical and mental challenges where the boys are pitted against the girls, but they'll also be going on romantic dates where love could blossom. So the show, the show is designed to test their loyalties to the limit. Um, is it mates before dates or will they end up in bed with the enemy? Um, the show is going to be fast turnaround. It's like Love Island. So I haven't really got any footage to show you. We haven't shot anything. But in true development style, we've raided the internet and uh, we've cut together a sizzle that hopefully will give you an idea of the uh, format. Thanks very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Carl. I'm here to talk to you about uh, Brown. I think what picture. Yes, Bromans, those absolute legends there. Um, for those that don't know, this is a show where we take some of uh, Britain's biggest lads and we send them back to ancient Rome uh, where they're going to live and fight like gladiators did 2,000 years ago. Why wouldn't you? Uh, this was developed with Shu, Joe and Sam. Uh, they asked us to think about uh, what a living history show would look like on ITV2. Um, if you're particularly keen on the sort of historical accuracy in those sorts of shows, uh, you might be a bit disappointed, um, but uh, we'll show, I think, a couple of clips. There's a clip, there's a sort of promo clip now, and then there's a bit of their training, their first day training in the Colosseum. I'll honestly say this, it's the most fun I've had making a show in a long, long time. Uh, utterly ridiculous, uh, the whole thing. Um, uh, there's a couple of things that we thought were important, but, and Shu and that lot, by the way, are amazing to work with if, if you're going to make a show with them. They're, they're really, really supportive. Um, but there's a couple of things that I thought, uh, well, we all thought was important uh, when we were making it. One of them was that we had to get the cast to take it as seriously as possible. Uh, the more serious they would take it, the funnier it would be. Um, and one idea that we had in order to, to kind of encourage them to do that was that we'd get the whole production team to wear togas uh, throughout the whole shoot. Um, so... I think, yes, there we are. Uh, that's, I don't know how many, but Ben Kelly, Peter Tierney, he's a series producer, uh, Kat and, and uh, Nat, and then that's Joe Mace with the off-the-shoulder <laughs> number, uh, Toga. And um, th this was taken by a uh, press photographer, 
And um, when I got back to London, we looked through the photos, hadn't realised that Joe had taken the photographer off for a private shoot. Um, <laughs> and really, really went for it. So, um, so yeah, so... It, it, but genuinely, I mean, it, it was a laugh to sort of choose which toga to wear each day, but it, it meant the cast genuinely sort of went for it, really, really committed to it. Uh, so it comes out, I think, in about two or three weeks' time. Um, it was, as I said, the most fun we've had. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Carl. Right, I'd like to welcome Paul back. What I've learned from watching those VTs is that ITV2 is the home of sexy people, clearly. Obviously. <laughs> all, <laughs> all, all your shows involve beautiful people. Is that a criteria? Uh, it's not a criteria, but we're an Entertainment First channel. And uh, Entertainment First, comedy, joint first. Uh, and uh, young people like watching other young people. There needs to be a level of aspiration about some of the things that we do. Love Island is obviously cast in a certain way um, because they're superhuman, beautiful people. Um, and the casting of the show is uh, a very significant and important part of its success, I think. Yeah, and it would certainly work. Let's talk about a couple of your other new commissions. Um, talk us through Dress to Impress. Uh, Dress to Impress is um, uh, a new series from uh, Matt Edmondson, who uh, is a Radio 1 DJ, but also a bit of a collaborator with ITV2. He's done a few things for us. Uh, it's a format. It's uh, shopping and dating, so effectively uh, the young lady in episode one uh, will have her outfits bought for her uh, by three uh, strapping ne'er-do-wells who've got no clue how to get through Dorothy Perkins. And uh, she will decide who to go out on the date with based on their outfit choices. So it's very simple, very neat. It's a relatively low cost, uh, high volume piece. It's to strengthen Shoulder Peak on ITV2, so it will be running at 6 o'clock every night, and we've ordered 30 episodes with a view to do uh, more um, should it be successful. But we've, we've obviously had it delivered. It looks great. Matt is doing the VO on it, and um, it's a really, really fun new edition, I think. Brilliant. And Time Wasters? Uh, time Wasters, uh, I feel like Time Wasters has been, we've talked about Time Wasters in about the last three Edinburghs because um, it's uh, a sitcom. And uh, sitcoms take an awful long time to develop and write and produce and ultimately um, get onto the television. But it will be on very, very soon. It starts, um, I think it's late September. It's uh, a sitcom from Daniel Lawrence Taylor, who is a great actor and writer. He stars in it. It's a very diverse cast. It's um, a group of jazz musicians in modern day London who, uh, through a weird time travel scenario, end up in the 1920s. Um, and it's a real fish out of water. It's a largely black cast. You can imagine them arriving as a, as a kind of urban contemporary um, uh, music act into the 1920s uh, scene. So um, we've got high hopes for that. It's, uh, it's a young comedy. It's got a nice vibe. It feels urban and contemporary, and yet it's got an element of period about it. Well, uh, I mean, speaking about comedy, yeah. uh, yesterday Kevin Ligo said that the, the future of fool. scripted comedy it was looking bleak on ITV. Are you, are you I think he, throwing I think, them a lifeline? Are you yeah, no, it's not. It, it's lifeline? not that. Um, uh, I think uh, ITV2 is, as I said, a destination where comedy can play very well. Uh, we've had um, success with comedy before. There's comedy in everything we do. Carl just showed um, a few clips from um, Bromans, which, you know, it's designed to be funny from the get-go. But in um, scripted comedy, in the kind of old-fashioned version of um, comedy, you know, eight by 30 minute parts, um, we have uh, Time Wasters, which is brand new. We've got Plebs, which you might recognise the set. They shoot it in the same place in Bulgaria, um, which is our ancient Rome uh, uh, sitcom that will be back for a fourth series early next year. Um, and then we've got another um, show from Tom Davis and uh, Tiger Aspect, which is a, a weird uh, espionage spoof uh, that is absolutely fantastic. The read-through uh, for the first few episodes was this week, and, and it, w it was proper funny. Sometimes you go to read-throughs, as, as some of you might know, and you're kind of doing that nervous laugh thing. But um, <laughs> no, it's proper, proper funny. Um, so we've got three uh, big, properly funded, that is the most expensive thing we, we can do is invest in UK original scripted, it's all fully funded. Um, so, so on ITV2 at least, it has to be part and parcel of what we offer. Um, it, it, it would not make sense for us to not be in comedy on ITV2. Okay, brilliant. I look forward to seeing them. Um, 
A uh, question coming through on the app. You mentioned that you're beating E4 now. Um, what do you think E4 have done wrong and what are you getting right? No, E4 have done nothing wrong. Um, and I was listening to um, Ralph in the leaders' debate who rightly said um, E4 are not down. It's just that we are so far up that we have leapfrogged them, if you like. Um, E4 have um, a different mix of, of programming. They do very, very well. They've always been a very pure young adult um, channel. So um, I'm not here to, to do E4 down, and I'm glad that the reason we've overtaken them is because we've become much stronger, not because by default they've weakened. Um, it, that's not the case. Um, and I think you know having two um, strong channels attracting a young audience uh, in a climate where BBC Three has gone online um, is, is actually really helpful, not least in addressing this notion that I think has permeated a little bit at this conference um, of young people having kind of hemorrhaged away from television. Um, I don't think they have. I think when you've got the right content, you can bring them back. And I don't think they need to come back and just watch it in an old-fashioned linear way. You know, it's 8 o'clock, you can have this now. Um, you can watch it across other platforms and, and ITV2 and um, some of our content on some of our other younger channels, CITV and ITVB in particular, that content resonates incredibly well on the ITV hub. Uh, that's where people are going as well as the channel. The numbers for, as, as um, Richard alluded, the numbers for Love Island on the ITV hub have been breaking records. There were 103 million requests for episodes of Love Island during the seven week run just on the ITV hub. Wow. So how are you going to build on that success? What's on your wish list for ITV2 in particular? Um, well, Survival of the Fittest is the next big thing mm -hmm. um, that we'll be doing um, next winter. And given that we didn't do anything like that this winter, we're hoping that will make a difference and that'll keep the engine ticking over until we come back with um, another series of Love Island. But peppered in amongst that, we have... Um, obviously, this is the first full year of um, the Seth MacFarlane animated series deal that we've done with Fox. So you always get Family Guy and American Dad late night every night, as we say in our marketing on uh, ITV2. And that's been really helpful because, again, that's a very pure audience. Um, but the growth um, that we've had this year, we can't replicate that. To, to add another 23% in the next 12 months is impossible. Um, so for us, the benchmark of success going forward will, will be to, to remain number one. It's one thing to have got there. We've now got a job to do to make sure that we can um, stay in pole position. So that, that's our focus now. Okay, let me ask you a question about Love Island. We've spoken a lot about it. Um, a question coming through on the app. Are there any plans to make Love Island more LGBT friendly? At the moment, you have you know, a boy-girl pairing, yeah. would, you, would you foresee a same-sex pair, pairing on there? It's difficult because the format doesn't really allow it. Um, the, if you're familiar with the programme, um, it's about coupling and recoupling. And, and the idea is that either the girls will sit by the fire pit and the boys will be choosing or vice versa. To complicate it with um, same-sex relationships is, 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 is to take something away from the format. Um, I know Richard said, maybe with tongue-in-cheek, that we might do a gay version one day. Uh, the thing about having a success, you know, things like Big Brother have, have shown you where you, where you might go next um, with, a, with a, a format like that. For the moment, we're, we're treading very carefully with Love Island. We don't want to over-egg the pudding, so that's why we're not doing a winter version of Love Island. We're doing another show that borrows a bit from Love Island, but it's not Love Island. Um, and, but the next thing we do will need to be something different and I don't think we'll go back to a celebrity version of Love Island because obviously this was spawned from an old series that ITV did um, some years ago with celebrities. Let's uh, move on and talk about ITVB. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's been doing? Are you pleased? Uh, well we're pleased with ITVB because um, in a really tough uh, year um, it's holding its own. It does very well for young mums and young women. Our commissions, I wish we could do more, I wish we had more money for commissions on ITVB because they, um, they land much, much stronger than, than do the acquisitions on, on the channel. Um, TOWIE is the big show by some margin, The Only Way is Essex, which moved from ITV2 as part of this restructure that I talked about in terms of a uh, reorganisation of the portfolio. Um, uh, TOWIE um, has changed this year in terms of the way we play it out. It's traditionally always been three series of 12 episodes, so three times a year. This year it's two series of 18 episodes, so still there's still about 27 hours of TOWIE every year. But it's our soap opera, it's TOWIE on ITVB. It's, it, it's the big thing that we'll always have, I think. Um, but because we've not had um, a series in the summer, but we'll get a longer series in the autumn. And because it's such a big show for us and delivers so much, it will tip the, it will tip the ratings in favor, in, in positive, uh, into positive ter territory. 
in the uh, third and fourth quarters. Um, so, uh, yeah, so B's in very, very good shape. And we've got some really good stuff coming up on B. Most of them spun out of TOWIE, weirdly. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've got a series, if, you, if you'd like me to just yeah, uh, tell you what we're doing. We've got a series with Elliot Wright, uh, a short series, uh, Elliot's Wedding. Um, Elliot and Sadie, his fiancée, are getting married. They live in Marbella and uh, have been running a restaurant. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the spin-offs. And then uh, Megan McKenna, who is, uh, I think, a real star on ITVB. Uh, she's in TOWIE at the moment, but she's been in Big Brother. She's been on X on the Beach. Um, and we're doing a series with her. She's got a brilliant voice, brilliant singing voice, and uh, she's got a kind of Taylor Swift kind of quality to, oh, her, wow. uh, to her singing. So she's in Nashville for us doing a three-part series, uh, which launches uh, very soon. In fact, before Terry comes back, we'll, um, we'll see Megan in Nashville. There's something about Megan, it's called. Wow, look forward to that. Do you think Terry will ever end? Um, I don't know, but I hope not. Uh, I said it's our soap opera. Uh, so in the way that Coronation Street has run for 60 years, um, uh, how we can, can, can change, we can recast it, we can contemporise it, we can switch it up as, as you've seen changes, I'm sure, in all of the, the big soaps. Uh, East Enders, Coronation Street, Hollyoaks, which is also obviously a Lime um, production. So no, we can we can make sure that um, Towie survives for as long as we've got somewhere to play it and as long as there's an audience that wants it. If someone is pitching ideas to you for ITVB, what, what should they be aiming for? Uh, big characters. Um, it is a fundamentally a reality channel, the kind of obdocky type of reality. Um, um, most of the, well, all of the successful programmes on the channel have got strong female characters at the heart of them. There's some really feisty women and some beautiful women in TOWIE. Um, the Real Housewives of Cheshire is a, a brilliant uh, version of um, The Real Housewives, which obviously um, is UK originated. That is, a, that is a very, very good example of how to do a reality show. The women on there are crazy. Um, the audience love them, the crazier they get. Last season was the craziest, the ratings went up, go figure. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a lot more in the kind of maternity space as well on ITVB now. So um, Sam, and, uh, Sam and her sister Billy Fairs, um, girls that were in TOWIE, are young mums now. And um, we're kind of following them again. And we've got another, I think, really big, high profile um, talent um, that we've not announced yet, so I can't say too much. but. Um, we will be following her and her family, and uh, I think people will be uh, intrigued when we are able to announce who that is and what she'll be doing with us. Very character-led, then. Very much so, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about Encore 3 and 4. How, how would you sum up their year? Uh, uh, well, 4 is slightly separate because it does a different thing and we kind of run it slightly differently. So if I talk about Encore and 3 in particular, yeah. um, both those channels are largely archive driven. Uh, uh, Encore is purely drama. It exists only on the Sky platform. It does a job for the business alongside a bigger deal that we've got with Sky um, for a lot of our content on extended catch up. Um, uh, I think Kevin mentioned um, Encore in the leaders um, debate earlier. Um, the ratings for Encore are largely irrelevant because um, it's available to consumers in Sky Homes that have got all the technology within their home to be able to go and find whatever they want that comes under the Encore brand, which is largely classic drama from ITV, including Broadchurch and Downton Abbey and such. Um, and they go and they find it and they watch it on their own terms as a kind of escort thing. So the whole, the, the, it's doing fine is, is Encore, um, but it's not really, fundamentally, it's not really a linear channel. It's, um, it's an overarching brand for quality drama from ITV that becomes exclusive after seven days in, um, in Sky Homes. ITV3 is, um, has lost a lot of content, actually, because when we launched ITV Encore, we promised Sky as part of the quite lucrative deal that we've got with them that um, they would have exclusivity on a lot of the newest content. So poor old ITV3, which is just a repeats channel for the most part. We do a little bit of commissioning around the margins, um, but that's generally to do with um, stunts or little seasons that, um, that we might be planning. So there were some clips in there of we've done a Morecambe and Wise um, special and we did a carry-on season with some lovely films uh, with the, um, access to some of the um, carry-on talent. 
um, and, and so forth. Um, so ITV3 is um, the number two digital channel. It's, it does amazingly well without us needing to do an awful lot to it. Uh, we rely on ITV commissioning brilliant storytelling, whether it's um, a drama or factual or entertainment. Um, because whilst ITV main channel is doing that, there is somewhere else where that stuff lives on, the kind of long tail um, of viewing to those programmes um, is in part on ITV3. It's also home to a lot of crime dramas too, isn't it? What, what do you think it is about the Agatha Christie's and the Midsummer Murders that still brings in the viewers? Well, I don't know. Kevin, again, may I keep referencing Kevin? It's the only session I've been to today. I do apologise. <laughs> um, uh, Kevin said today, rather uh, uh, jokingly, uh, when he was asked about what TV would look like in 15 years, what ITV would look like in 15 years, and he said, well, on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, there'll be a Midsummer Murders repeat. Uh, and um, that's probably true, because um, people like it. It's all about good storytelling, and when you have the budget that ITV has to um, create the content that it does, especially for these 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock dramas, you know, you're talking a million pounds an hour plus for this kind of um, content. There's not a lot of channels can do it, and yet it's absolutely the number one genre for a certain audience. Audience. It's not necessarily what young people want to watch, but on ITV3 that's irrelevant because on ITV3 we're selling older audiences and we're selling more at market audiences who come in for the Poirots and the Veras and the, and the Midsummer Murders. Well, as you said, ITV4 is slightly different to those two channels. Yeah. Is there scope for producers to pitch ideas? Yeah, there is, and I would say um, uh, ITV4 is known for sport. We do a lot of um, very good sport. We, do, we have a season in the summer, which we're just coming out of, which is a lot of cycling. We've got French Open tennis. We've got Isle of Man TT, and these are really big um, events for us that do very well. But we don't have, I have to tell you, and this has been on my to-do list for a while, um, and we'll get there, but we don't have a brilliant reputation outside of sport on ITV4. Um, what I would love to do is um, get more ideas from producers around entertainment for men. It's a, it's a channel that we target men with. Um, and sometimes um, people will... Uh, we, we get pitched an awful lot of entertainment, um, you know, studio-based or otherwise uh, content for ITV2. And if it's young enough and funny enough and good enough, we'll pursue it. But sometimes I wonder why they're not pitching it to uh, as an ITV4 idea, because it's got a kind of a blokey kind of um, sensibility to it. Things like um, Taskmaster, they're not designed absolutely for men, but they skew quite well in, uh, in favour of men. And we don't have that. We don't have the equivalent of Dave Gorman doing those hideous, you know, funny PowerPoint slide presentations. Um, uh, and I think that's where we um, probably lose out to um, someone like Dave, who might be perceived to be a rival to ITV4. So I would like to get into the, like to get some credibility for doing some good stuff around non-sport on ITV4. But ITV4 itself is having a really, really, really great year. Well, we're almost out of time. I just want to really quickly touch on CITV. Yeah. Are you looking for commissions there? Yeah, we're commissioning uh, on CITV. We've never not been commissioning on CITV. We've had a restructure around the channel, which has meant that um, we've brought it more into line with um, the other digital channels in that we don't have a dedicated kids commissioner. Um, so if you've got an entertainment idea that happens to be for kids, you can either bring it to me or you can take it to our entertainment team. If you've got a factual idea for kids, bring it to me or bring it to our factual team. If you've got a relationship with Satmahan or Sue or uh, anyone in, in, in the factual team and your idea just happens to be one for kids aged 6 to 12, by all means pitch it in. Um, we've had a bit of a stock take and a bit of an overhaul. We've cancelled some big contracts. We're doing some really good deals now um, uh, in the kind of acquisition space for uh, CITV, which means it gives us the uh, luxurious opportunity of being able to do more uh, with you guys um, if you've got great kids' ideas. I'm just going to finish up on one question. This is the question of the session. Which member of this season's Love Island cast do you most identify with? <laughs> Whoever sent that in, thank you. <laughs> I'm a little bit leave it. I think I'm, I, I think I'm ITV2's Kem. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And on that note, thank you very much, Paul. Thank Thanks you. as well to um, Will, Richard and Carl. And thank you for coming along. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Broadcast. Um, the TV awards are just getting underway upstairs, so I know a lot of you want to get to them. Thank you very much for coming along. Enjoy the rest of the festival.